Aishi Dao Amphibious Operation. This is the start of the actual missions because we get to do things like check in on the mission briefing and and custom and like choose our mech loadout. I take it the uh, there's there's a much bigger uh, range of weapons than what we had in the last stage. There is, and from this point on, you're going to see me start using a wide variety of VTs because there's like I like around twenty in the game. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is, like, normally if you're playing this for the first time and doing it casually, you kind of want to stick with just the decider until you get access to, like, to very specific later mechs that I'm not going to mention, because spoilers. <laughs> but we do, uh, we do get, like, different VTs of this same generation that I'm going to be using with as many different weapons as possible. And for missions like this one, it goes smoothly. Later ones, you're gonna find that even though like the like I make it look impressive, it did it does take a lot of tries. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was under the impression that there was only really one or one type of mech, maybe with like um, specializations to it. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna use like the next uh, the next VT that we already have access to, the Falchion. So yeah, like, as you can see, like, under the reinforcements, like, the different stats or whatever. Oh yeah, I also forgot, we can buy a boombox and play sick tunes in our cockpit. Ah, uh, hell yeah, gonna be playing Rush all night! <laughs> but yeah, you can see, like, the different labels, manufacturer, generation, type. Like, generation refers to the capabilities and the HUD loadout, uh, or, like, the HUD uh, arrangement of your VT. And then, like, type is referring basically to the weight class, so, like, our light VT, like, it's not going to be able to carry as many weapons as the decider. But, obviously, it's got different, like, benefits in terms of, like, kind of, like, speed and, and, and so on, because, you know, it's the lighter load. Yeah, that, I would assume any kind of light mech would be quicker, dodgier, that sort of thing. Yeah. See ya. Uh, I will say... I feel like this is a missed opportunity considering it was like a feature uh, promoted by several games on the OG Xbox. But the fact that you can't use the boombox to access custom soundtracks that you load onto your Xbox hard drive itself. Yeah, like that. Because otherwise, that, that... you get like these, like these variety of different songs that like you can actually like listen to it on that menu and hear it in full quality. But like you'll obviously see like what as part of the kind of the immersion aspect. Once you hear it in the cockpit, it is noticeably more muted and kind of tinny sounded because it's actually coming out of a fucking boombox in the corner of your cockpit. <laughs> so here we go, boot up sequence again before we exit out of these gigant out of the hole of this gigantic ship to storm the beach of Haishidao. You'll learn to never get tired of seeing this. <laughs> if for some reason you're actually tired of seeing it, in which case, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> this is not the LP for you. <laughs> it's like you might as well be complaining about flight sims that force you to go through like the pre-check routines. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm trying to get through. Yeah, see, you can kind of hear the music again in the background, and like what I was talking about with the sound quality. <laughs> so yeah, we can at least walk through like water that goes up to our ankles or even our knees just fine, but one thing that the manual does warn about with piloting VTs is that, uh, is that they absolutely become unusable when they get too deep in water. Mm. So it's like, that's basically one of the ways that some missions will, like, try and, like, box you in and keep you from, like, going too far out of your way anywhere. Yeah. Because, like, you fall into deep enough water, like, that VT's lost, you have to eject or you're just going to drown with it. <laughs> Using our zoom function to kind of just pick off these, uh, these tanks as we continue to storm across them. Yeah, why did your... Why did your teammates just walk past them. Friendly AI is not a strong suit of this game. 
it actually uh, putting it enough, politely. It well, that's putting it politely right now because it gets way worse in the second campaign. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention there are two campaigns in this. We're playing through the first one right now, and like the second one, like it's got some specific changes. One that also has to do with friendly AI that we'll get there when we get there. But for now, uh, this is a nice early mission just because. It's, it's not making you focus on having to, like, hunt down specific targets. It's just destroy X amount of enemy forces, like, a certain percentage, like, within the time limit, like, within the operational time that's given. So, and it kind of gives you some, like, some freedom to approach in different ways. Like, you could just, if you wanted to, stay in front of those big installations and and systemically like pick off each of like the different turrets and, and gun placements or you could just storm past them and like take out the vts in the rear since mm -hmm. they count as like a larger percentage of the forces i just noticed the time limit on this mission is a lot less generous than the last one it is but it's very but, but like with what i described for this mission it's a it's still more than enough like, the, the 40 minutes in the prologue was just overkill, for whatever reason. Yeah. I still I still don't get why they made it that big. It'd be kind of cool if there was a special ending, just if you dicked around for, like, 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, if this is the best our country has to offer, we deserve this. Yeah. See, and now we're moving up towards the giraffes and the vits. Like, pretty much like a good thing to keep in mind when like playing this game like in missions it's always you know, like it's juggling certain priorities like it's not just being able to like move your camera and gun arms like independently but it's also learning to like be like efficient and smooth with like your speed and turning direction because obviously you got like the slide step for dodging as you've seen me do a couple times already but like gear shifting is is pretty important because you can't much like with a with like a car you can't just shove it straight into fifth gear and expect to go right away <laughs> so you have to manage like like not only building up the speed and gear shifts but also learning when it's important to gear shift down because going too fast while taking turns will cause your VT to topple over. It doesn't oh, wow. happen this mission, but I let it happen a couple times elsewhere throughout the game, to my dismay. <laughs> Do you just wind up flailing on your back like a turtle? No, you, uh... No, like, you... It's more like you always, like, end up falling to your left or right side. Yeah. That, that's usually what happens when you fall from turning. Sometimes, like... If you go really, really fast and try and come to a sudden stop, you'll fall backwards. But, but, but the thing with that is that as soon as you finish like the crash animation, you just hit accelerate and then you instantly pop back up. It's one of the oh, things okay. that is like less realistic about the whole thing. And I think even the uh, the mecha designer for this game, Junji Okubo, lamented how that was kind of like something he re uh, re regretted not coming up with like a kind of a good system for. Because yeah. it, was, it was something the devs basically said, look, we kind of have to do this just for gameplay sake and limiting frustration. Just roll with it. Yeah, no, that's that's completely fair, yeah. I would say. And the combat results are in. We earn supply points and combat points, which are basically like the, we, we, those, the points we earn in mission get are multiplied for both of those. But they get a multiplier depending on the difficulty. So it's basically the same for that. Combat points are how we rank up. Supply points are how we acquire new VTs. It's, uh... And the thing is with that, with that particular end screen is that that's the only time you're really gonna, like, see, like, what the total supply and combat points are. Because from here on, uh... I shifted gears with this LP away from playing on the actual campaign file and to free mission, and you will see why. It has to do with a very specific unit I had to force myself to get good with. <laughs> Let Look the suffering to that. begin. Mm-hmm.